Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. The power of your words and the power of your thoughts. And although we may not get total victory overnight, at least we know where we're headed and we can work with God to get better and better every day. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in your heart comes out of your mouth. We can learn more about people by listening to them than through any other source. And we can also learn a lot about ourselves <laughs> by listening to ourselves. James 3 teaches us that if we can control our tongue, we are fully and completely mature and we can control every other part of our body. Wow. Help me, Jesus. Ezekiel 37. Now, not only do we need to stop saying wrong things, but we need to say right things. And the best way to stop saying wrong things is to stay so busy saying right things that there's no room for the wrong things. <laughs> See, I think we need to take a much more positive approach and not just always talk about what we shouldn't do, But just talk about what we should do. We overcome evil with good. So let me just talk to you a little bit about what we should be talking about. Let's give more thanks to God. Let's be thankful for more things. Let's get up in the morning and just look around and find at least five things that we can specifically say, God, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful that I've got a bed to sleep in and I'm not sleeping out in the street somewhere. I'm thankful, I thank God all the time for clean water because I've been in places where people are drinking water that you would not believe that any human being would put in their body. I'm so thankful for water. How about heat and air conditioning? That's a good thing to be thankful for, isn't it? Amen. I'm thankful to have all kinds of clothes to choose from. You don't have to be an Einstein to find five things to be thankful for. And then maybe the next day we could find five more, maybe even make a list. Let's fight the enemy. Let's fight the negative with positive things. Let's fight evil with good. Let's not let the devil win. Let's not let him use our mouths as a garbage dump. Amen? Woo! Ezekiel 37, the first 10 verses, are a whole sermon in themselves. You can prophesy your future. What do you want to happen in the future? Then start calling those things that be not as though they are. I'm debt free. That's a good thing to say. I don't care if you're up to your eyeballs in debt. Start saying I'm debt free. Stop saying I can't find a job and say I have a job. When I go out and look for a job, I have favor. Do not say again, I don't, I can't find a job, 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 I can't find a job. Quit claiming diseases like they're your personal possession. <laughs> well, you know, my cancer and my high blood pressure and my diabetes. Let's, you know, maybe it's attacking your body, but you don't have to take ownership of it and become its buddy. Amen? You can at least say this diabetes that I've got is on its way out because it's not God's best for me. Your words affect your body. Our body has healing abilities. It has regenerating power in it. And our thoughts and our words do affect it. Amen? Amen? I put together this little book a few years ago called The Secret Power of Speaking God's Word Out Loud. And every time I talk about this book, a lot of people yell because a lot of people have it. It's just, it's just a wonderful little tool. I have put together scriptures in groups 
in first-person confessions. So when you feel like you're about to be flushed down the toilet, you can get this out and... <laughs> For example, if you're feeling weak and fearful, you can get out the courage chapter and just take a little walk. I'm strong and of good courage. I do not fear, nor am I afraid. For the Lord my God is the one who goes with me. He will not leave me nor forsake me. I said I am strong, vigorous, and very courageous. I am not afraid, neither will I be dismayed. For the Lord my God is with me wherever I go. I said I am strong and courageous. I will not be afraid. <laughs> Instead of saying, I'm just so afraid. Oh, I'm just so afraid. I tell you, I'm just so afraid. I'm shaking. I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid. <laughs> oh, God, please help me. Please help me, God. Please help me. And God wants to help us, but we've got to get in agreement with him. How can two walk together if they're not in agreement? We can't be pulling against God all the time and expect him to fight for us. I was in church for so many years before I ever heard anything even remotely like this. It is so valuable to learn the power of your words and the power of your thoughts. And although we may not get total victory overnight, at least we know where we're headed and we can work with God to get better and better every day. Amen? How many of you that have been having kind of a rough time realize right now that part of the reason is because you have not been controlling your thoughts and you've been saying all kinds of stuff that's working against you? Then you're in the right place tonight, right? Ezekiel 37, 1, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of a valley and it was full of bones. <laughs> and he caused me to pass around among them, and behold, there were very many human bones, and they were very dry. <laughs> Dead and dry. Many bones. And he said, Son of man, can these bones live? <laughs> and I answered, Oh Lord, you're the only one that knows. And God gave him a plan. So he said to me, Prophesy to these bones. <laughs> now watch this. And say to them, Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You dead dry bones, you just lay there and let me prophesy the word of God to you. You shall rise up and live again. You shall have flesh upon your bones once again. You look at your checkbook that's in the red and you say, you will be in the black and there will be a surplus in you. And I will have money to meet my needs and plenty to give away. Now, it doesn't all come just because you say it. You need to follow the other principles in the Word of God, too. But here's the problem. You can follow those other principles and keep talking against what the Word says and still never end up with what God wants you to have. So let's just say that you tithe and you give, but you got a case of what I call poverty mouth. Well, I'll just never have anything. You know me, always the tail end of any, everything. Well, there goes my money. Devil steals my money. Every time I get a little bit of money, something else breaks down in this house and takes my money. I mean, we say all the time, I'm sick and tired of this, and then we wonder why we're sick and tired. <laughs> oh, dare I go there? I don't know. You know, you'll quit saying everything's a pain in the bottom if you ever get one. Some of these things come back to us. Oh yes, I've claimed that for 40 years. Now here it is. It's just raining cats and dogs. Well, how dumb is that? Don't look at your kids and tell them they'll never amount to anything. What a horrible thing for a parent to prophesy over their child. And if somebody prophesied that over you, you break the power of that prophecy by confessing the Word of God over your life. 
My father told me I would never amount to anything. And the last 15 years of his life, he had to depend on me to pay his bills. <laughs> and I was happy to do it. Happy to have the grace to be able to forgive him and to be able to love him and to take care of him. But you can prove the naysayers wrong by believing the Word of God. In Jeremiah chapter 1, God said to Jeremiah, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And I approved of you as my chosen instrument. And Jeremiah said, Oh no, not me. I'm too young. You got the wrong man. And God said to him, Say not that I've got the wrong guy. In other words, God was prophesying his future to him, and he was trying, he was killing his destiny with his own words. If I were you, I would take some time every day and in the privacy of your home or in your car driving to work. I still do this every day. Every day of my life, I say, everything I lay my hand to prospers and succeeds. I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I lend to many nations and I never have to borrow. And our ministry gives financial help into 150 nations around the world, and we have zero debt. We don't have to borrow money. Don't tell me the Word of God doesn't work, because it does. Now, in addition to saying those things, we've used good principles of wisdom, but our words are so important. I said today, no evil thing can dwell in my body. Sickness and disease cannot survive in me because I am full of light and full of the power of God. I was just driving over here and just kind of muttered that under my breath. Use your quiet time to say something that makes sense. Don't just sit on a stool somewhere and worry. Moods. Wish I had more time for the mouth, but moods, hmm, moods. <laughs> Dave said he used to drive down the highway coming home from work and think, I wonder what she'll be like tonight. Brother, if you're with your wife, you're in for a fight going home. <laughs> okay, now look, let me tell you something. It is just really unpleasant to live with somebody who's just up and down and all over the board. The thing that I have appreciated more than anything about my husband is his stability. And I desperately needed that example in my life because I never had any stability growing up. I lived in a wild house. And I honestly believe that one of the greatest ways that we can show people our faith in God is by learning how to remain stable in every kind of situation. Let's learn to be the same on rainbow days as we are on circumcision days. Now you're going, huh? All right, God had a covenant with Noah. He sealed it with a rainbow. Wow. He had a covenant with Abraham. He sealed it with a circumcision. Ow. So whether you get a wild day or an owl day, a rainbow day or a circumcision day, you guys are looking at me like I've just lost my mind. <laughs> well, I just can't believe you said that in here. <laughs> Don't pick on me. God said it first. It's in his book. <laughs> How many of you get it? I mean, now really, if you think about it, what sense does that make? If I would have been Abraham, I would have said, God, what's up? 
I want one of those pretty rainbows you gave Noah. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, this isn't fair. Why are you picking on me? <laughs> God doesn't want us to have to have answers for everything. He wants us to trust Him. Just trust Him. I trust you, God. Paul said, I've learned how to be content, whether I'm abased or abounding. I trust God that whatever's coming my, my way right now is going to work out for my good eventually in the whole overall plan of my life. You know, you can't look at your life on any one given day. You got to look at your life as a whole. Because we all have rainbow days. Even though we have those other ouchy days, we have rainbow days too. And if we look at everything as a whole, then those difficult days don't seem so difficult. Remember the day that your <clears throat> first child was born and how excited you were. Maybe that'll help you get over the days when you're not so excited that you got them. <laughs> All right, I want to say something to you. I want you to listen to this. We cannot control when emotions will or won't show up, but we can learn to not let them control us. And I wrote out here in my notes, this is the best I can offer you. <laughs> I can't give you a plan to tell you that you're always going to feel the way you'd like to feel. And if I tried to, I'd be lying. Emotions come and go. They roar in and they subside. They're there when you don't want them, not there when you do want them. You can get angry just like that. Something happens you weren't expecting. <clears throat> but the Bible says, when you're angry, do not sin. It's not a sin to feel anger. It's a sin to let the anger control you. <laughs> well, I can't help how I feel, Joyce. And well, I'll give you that. Unless you're fueling those feelings with your own thoughts and words, then sometimes we can't control what feelings come. I mean, you know, you, you go to bed some nights and you think you got all these plans for tomorrow and you just feel all full of zip and you know you're going to do it. And you wake up the next morning and feel like you can't even drag yourself out of bed. <laughs> you didn't plan that. That wasn't what you wanted. But you don't have to live according to that. One of the greatest things that I learned I'm talking to you about the things that I've learned that have been the most important to me in my life. Learning that I could think my own thoughts, that I didn't have to just think and meditate on whatever fell in my head. That was huge for me. And I wrote the book, Battlefield of the Mind, and it still, after 17 years, is my number one best-selling book. And I wrote that book when I was learning all these things and they were so fresh in me and so, I was so full of revelation. If you haven't read that book, you need to get it and read it. The Battlefield of the Mind. Learning the power of my words, really understanding that when I said things to people that I could tear them down or build them up. That just with my mouth, I can help somebody have a great day or I can cause them to have a bad day. What a power God has put in our mouth. How we shape the way our children think about themselves when they get older by the things that we say to them when they're little and growing up. And how wonderful it was for me to learn that even though I had had many things said to me that had shaped me in a wrong way and that had wounded me and hurt me, that I could take the Word of God and I could speak that Word out of my mouth and it would cause me to heal and recover from all of those other things that have been said to me that were wrong. The Word of God in your mouth is stronger than anything that has ever been said to you. Did you hear me? The Word of God in your mouth has power. Let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. 
the Bible says. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and water the seeds in the earth and cause them to sprout, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void, but it shall accomplish the purpose for which I send it, Isaiah 55. The word of God does not return void. This word that I'm preaching tonight, there are so many amazing things happening in people's spirits in this room. And there are amazing things happening as people watch television. You're like, oh, you know. And there's things happening in our spirit. There's healing taking place. People's faith is being built up. People are getting hope. They're getting determination. All because God's word does not return void. It accomplishes the thing that you send it to do. Because I know the power of God's word. That's why Dave and I are committed to continue doing this until we draw our last breath. I don't care if they have to wheel me out on a cot someday and advertise that Granny Meyer's coming to town. I don't know what this is going to look like when it's 95, but honey, if I can walk, I'll be here. And we need to be committed to something. I'm committed to the Word of God and to bringing people the Word of God because I know what it can do for your life if you will get it in your mouth and begin to speak it. And then thirdly, it was so important to me to learn that although I couldn't control every feeling that I had, that I did not have to obey them and bow down to them. Let us stop worshiping our feelings and start worshiping God. Do you understand me? You can feel something very strongly, but you don't have to do what you feel. You have the authority to move on the other side of that feeling and do what you know is right. Did you hear me? You don't have to bow down to your feelings. You can move beyond how you feel. You can clean your house even if you don't feel like it. You can cut your grass and clean your yard up even if you don't feel like it. You can stick with people that you would like to just punch. <laughs> you don't have to buy everything you feel like buying. You don't have to eat everything you feel like eating. You say, now you've gone to meddling, let's just go on and do something else. Anger, following impulses, self-pity. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. Well, get reappointed. <laughs> well, I just feel like such a failure. I've got a revelation for you. You're not done if you're not dead. <laughs> Amen? One of the big reasons why we have difficulty controlling our thoughts, controlling our mouth, and especially controlling our emotions <clears throat> is when we get too tired, we don't get enough rest, we don't get enough sleep, we don't have any balance in our lives, we work too much, don't rest, we take on too much responsibility, we get in other people's stuff trying to fix their problems when they don't even want to fix them. Come on now, I'm talking to somebody. And then there goes the emotions. It's very interesting to me that the answer to many of our problems is balance. Well, the things that we think about and meditate on is ultimately what comes out of our mouth. And what comes out of our mouth determines, at least in part, what we believe. And you know, what we believe, the words that we speak, are very important because our words can either tear people down or build them up. They can uh, affect our own families. And so there's many, many things that we need to understand about the power of words.
I want you to meet my buddy Angela. She is seven years old. She's very, very ticklish. We've been able to make an impact in Angela and her family's life after a very devastating loss. You see, we're here in Zambia and water is a huge need here. Even though we are right along the banks of the Zambezi River where you think water would be plentiful, but that water is extremely dangerous. And Angela lost one of her sisters to a crocodile along the river as they were gathering water. If you can even imagine such a loss as a parent, as a sister, to lose someone that you love in such a terrible way. This is the biggest river in Zambia. So there were a lot of problems. There are a lot of crocodiles in the river. There are a lot of hippos in the river. The most affected people are their children. Uh, I lost my daughter, caught by the crocodile. I sent her to go and fetch water. How old was she? 10 years. 10 years old? Yes. Every time we, uh, we fetch water from that side, we, di we drink it direct without uh, putting any chemical in it. As you can see, this is, these are just villages. They don't have uh, money to buy chlorine or any chemical to purify water. So uh, we had uh, uh, diseases like uh, dysentery, diarrhea, of, uh, waterborne diseases. We were crying for clean water. How many people would you say were, were sick from waterborne illness during that time? There were many. If you, even if you go to the clinic there, they will give you the number. The people were suffering from this diarrhea and so forth. Now we are happy. We are drinking clean water. We are living a better life now. Now we are getting good water, safe water. Yes, even crocodiles are no more accident for crocodiles. We thank you very much for what you are doing. And people are healthier? Yes, very much. This ball which is set here, is not from, uh, from you. It's not from Hand of Hope itself, but it's from God himself. So they thank, they thank God for bringing Hand of Hope, to bring all that support all the way to here. It is safe, madam. We are happy on that. And all the people now are very happy. Praise to God. God loves us. Thank you. So now as Edith and her three girls are gathering water, they don't have to be in fear. They don't have to be in fear of the dangers of the river, of the animals, of the disease that the water carries. And we are so grateful that you have been right here with us to provide this for them. It's through your love for Christ and it's in sharing that love with Edith, her girls, and the entire village in this area that you are changing the world one little bit at a time. In het leven lopen we hier en daar butsen en schrammen op. Sponsor over. Maar sommige beschadigingen kunnen het leven volledig lam leggen. Hoe overwin je woede en bitterheid? Lees het boek van Joyce Meyer. Doe jezelf een plezier. Vergeef. En start bevrijd aan je toekomst. Bestel je boek. Doe jezelf een plezier. Vergeef. Via joyce-meijer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse verfrissing? Frisse Impulsen levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan.